Okay, so here we are. Let's have a look down here. So that's what we're looking at now. There's a lot of small ponds here. This is not quite an oxbow lake, but it's cut off from the main river. And here, you can see there's quite a bit of water really flowing out of here. And I know this is coming from seepage because further upstream here, it just runs into a dead end. So this is coming out from under the ground somewhere. Okay, here's our spear. So the problem that I face here is just to try and stay concealed from the fish. It also restricts where I can actually throw this spear. I don't know how deep this is, and it could be in a hole here and go grab it for a hole. I see some big fish over in here. Stop recording, don't stop recording, there's a really big fish. Can you get it? Fish white. Fish white's going to come over here. Got it? Missed. Uh. How fast did it move? Pretty fast. that tip again. Is it still recording? Yes. That was a pretty big fish and a big miss. Dad, how big was it? About that big. <gasps> okay, quotesy quotes. Yeah. Right. By the way, I'm really pleased with this this Ator Osso Blanco. I've had it out now for over a week. Uh, it's a knife I've had my eye on since I've been a kid, basically. Uh, this design. A lot of people might think it looks a bit like a Mall Ninja type knife, but I can tell you. Uh, it's really, really useful, very, very comfortable, and it's uh, yeah, it's a good bushcraft knife. So let's see if we can catch this fish enough chit chat. So I just uh, didn't have the camera on there, but I just want to show you reality here, and this is reality. When you plunge the spear, you miss your target. Uh, you're going to damage. You have damaged this this one here. Let's have a closer look at these, and you get all these roots and from the from the, uh, I've been hiding amongst the willow there in the background there, trying to catch a fish. And this is what happens when you hit rocks. This one didn't hit a rock, this one did. So I need to resharpen that there. Let's try and, let's try and do that. Let's get rid of these roots of here and check that everything is still, sec everything's really secure. So I just want to bring that tip back up again. And once you've made the spear, this is why you need a sharp tip on the end of whatever knife you're going to use because uh, you need to be able to use the tip because you see I can't get the whole knife in there. I certainly don't want to be cutting towards myself like that. I'm going to be cutting away. And the tip's got to be sharp. I mean, if these are not needle sharp, you're kind of wasting your time. This middle one's going to do the damage because it's so fat, but these ones on the outside are going to do the actual catching. Let's get that really sharp. That's not sharp enough.
it's got to be sharp. In order to penetrate the scales. Cat's not bad. Right, I just want to talk about this here um, and debunk some myths on the internet about making spears uh, since I've really tested this out now. Uh, as you saw the other day, you know, I made the centerpiece here. This is out of a green sapling of acacia, which is hardwood, but it's not exactly really hard now because it's still green. And I lashed these very dry and very dead, super hard spear tips on here. This is plum. Now this stuff, it's been plunged into the, sand, the river bottom several times now over the last hour in my attempt to try to catch some fish here. Uh, and you can see, despite this one being really, really thin, it still hasn't broken. And I have uh, briefly just sharpened this one, but this has been broken off several times. Now this is much harder than willow and many other woods, but I still had to resharpen that. And so that's my point. You can't, uh, unless you're spearing into an absolute huge uh, shoal of fish, school of fish, and uh, you can be assured you're not going to hit that river bottom. If you make it out of green wood, you are going to bust that tip. You can be expected to uh, having to sharpen that all the time. So that's a little pointer there. If you want to uh, fool around with spears, uh, it's best to really make the spear points out of a very hard uh, dead wood. So it's dry and it's already seasoned. So you need to look for a tree branch that you know is a from a, har a hardwood tree species. Okay, one thing uh, I forgot to tell you, which is really important, that green acacia I took the other day, this is it here, there's a bit of plum in there. This one, let's just put down the, the plum. Uh, so this was all green acacia. So what I've done with that, in order to really use it, I've had to heat that up uh, and, and, and fire it literally over a fire, dry it out over the fire, and that helps compress the wood, drive off the water, and make this wood extra hard. Otherwise, it's gonna to be too soft still, despite it being a hardwood, it'll still be too soft. So, uh, yeah. Now, the reality of it is, here on this river, there are absolutely bazillions of trees growing all along the river, but there's not one hardwood species in sight. And even the dead dry wood, such as the willow, it's hard, but it's not a hardwood, and you plunge that into the bottom, you're gonna bust it straight away. So I hiked into the hills um, several days ago, to find this uh, hard dry plum and I've got uh, several more pieces of it so I can replace them if I do break them but despite how thin they are even compared to this thick one here they have not broken after being plunged into a rocky sandy riverbed so they're really quite hard and that's what you really want to make spears out of in reality if you have to and if you can that is okay this is what you don't want when you're uh trying to fish with a spear and that's for it to start raining because you definitely can't see beneath the surface. So this is another environmental factor you've got to take into account when you're fishing with a spear. So here I am out on this willow perched above the water. It's perfect. I've just buggered up the spear for the nth time here. Let's have a look at it. Right, I've completely blunted that by plunging into the bottom. Missed some huge fish, but that's the reality of it. Of fishing with a spear unless the area you're fishing into as I said is a shoal and it's chock of fish you're uh, you know you are going to hit the bottom anyway let's continue here right okay this is where I propose we're going to start looking again for some fish because this small creek which runs off the main river when the main river is over there this small creek runs into a few little deep holes just around there. We're going to see what we can find in there. Okay, let's go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, it's pretty narrow here, and I know the fish are up here underneath this tree, and this is just a small section, so we don't want them to come down here, so I'm gonna use some of these rocks here and build a small thing just across here to constrain them. That's the smartest thing. 
you know, otherwise you just can't chase them all around the place. Okay, so what I've done here is I've made a small dam, but we don't really want a dam. We want the water to flow through. So I put these stones and sticks here. So the water is still flowing through, through the sticks. It's no problem and made a kind of a grate. Let's have a look at that here. So there's a grate there as such. There's a grate there and that will let the water flow through, but the fish won't be able to get through there. Okay. And let's hope, let's hope that that works. Okay, so we just missed another one then. And you're going to be pretty quick, but it's a pretty effective trap. We've got two here, so we've got them where they swim into this one. You see here in the foreground with all the sticks poking up. They're trying to get upstream and they get trapped in there. And another small up, very shallow one over there where I've got them channeled into them. We've kind of been equally successful. Um, here you can see I've placed some to get them to go into this channel, I put a few, you might be able to see some fish swimming around in there now, a few small branches there that they feel a bit more comfortable uh, getting underneath of. And there's some, just there, you can see this, here they come. So I'm gonna put the camera away because I can't do this with the camera on. Okay, here they come. They're underneath the log. Gotta be really quiet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here they come. They're thinking. Make into the reeds. Okay, gotta be quiet. I'll turn the camera. Okay, just caught another one that came up into the into the trap. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he went. Lost him. Okay, so let's have a look at the. So look at don't worry. Let's have a look at the. Look at. So here's our trap here, and we've had fish that have come up here. So we're going to get more to come up in here. Right, okay, so what's happened is some of the fish, right, have been trying to come up. I caught one of them here by hand. They're trying to come up our little trap. They're in the trap, and that's how we've caught them, like that. So that's pretty good, eh? So the trap works. They want to come upstream. They've, they've uh, been looking at all the disturbance we've made, and uh, yeah, one survival fish trap. Let's have a look at that. Okay, right, what we've done is these fish have come up into here, they're trying to get upstream, right? So let's just have a look here. Wait, oh, oh, oh. Let me zoom. You see him in there? Take the camera off. Okay, okay, right, don't get too close, it'll be out of focus. Okay, can you see him in there? Right. Okay, got him. Okay, can you see him in there? You sure? Okay, right, that's what's happened, right? Right, see that? Let me see if I can get him in one hand here. Camera, hold on. Yeah, give me the camera. Thanks. Hold on. There he is. Okay, there he is there. Oop. So, oh, there he goes. Okay, so there you go. Okay, just caught another one that came up into the into the trap. So they get caught in the in the wood in the sticks and they can't get through some of them got through this one didn't get through so if you get a lot enough of these buggers you you can't can uh, definitely have a feed okay he's going to go he let him come back up he, he's going to go again right okay here's another one just caught another one you see that there okay can you see him? right don't shake the camera okay don't shake the camera oh give me turn Okay, so we brought the spear down here with us today, but these fish are really too small for the spear. 
and because they're swimming so fast it was more prudent to actually build a fish trap so that's the logic behind that you know if you build a spear it's only really good for really big fish uh, especially fish that are swimming on the surface and most of these species if you've seen from some of the underwater footage already they're swimming quite below the surface so it was better to build this trap here like that and uh, as you saw it was uh, pretty successful yeah okay so bush camping tools here thanks for watching